So here we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, so yeah, I'm Clara from Open Lab, Newcastle University. And today I'm going to tell you about a year-long engagement working with the community of residents and a housing organization in an estate uh, undergoing urban regeneration in southeast London. Uh, so yeah, first off, I'd like to thank my co-authors, Alex Vasili, uh, Rob, Bettina, Pitt, um, as well as the residents and the regeneration team uh, with whom we worked. So HCI has long been concerned with the role of design and computing in placemaking, for example, through supporting deliberative processes or processes of story sharing towards the formation of uh, collective identities. Um, so with this work, uh, we asked ourselves, how might HCI support processes of community building in urban renewal context where the social, political, and economic practices that constitute place are inevitably multiple and contested? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the political landscape of urban renewal um, projects, which in the UK and in the global north are increasingly driven by policy promoting uh, social mixing, where uh, mixed tenancy programs um, are seen as a way to tackle uh, socioeconomic decline and promote uh, sustainable community. In the UK, this has translated um, in programs favoring a market-based model over social needs. So it's backed uh, by these trends uh, um, is the regeneration program of the estate uh, we engaged in. So the Palo Road estate uh, was built in the 1970s and comprised seven tower blocks, like the one you are seeing on the pictures there, but suffered a major decline um, in, the, in the 1980s, becoming uh, famed in the UK for crime and deprivation. So the regeneration then uh, was really driven by a desire to build a better place and sustainable community by reconfiguring uh, the state both materially and socially. This basically involved the changing uh, of the name of the estate, increased the number of family housing, and this decreased the number of social housing to introduce affordable and housing for sale. The regeneration also involved the program uh, to uh, engage residents in activities to influence the design of the new estate, as well as social activities to create a sense of uh, community. So as part of these activities, the residents uh, wanted to create a digital walking trail narrating um, sites of historical significance around their estate. So having experimented with the process to support city residents uh, making uh, issue-based digital walking trails in the past, we were invited to support the residents in their process. So the context basically presented a complex interplay between actors and ideas of place. Uh, where despite its good intention, actually the regeneration ended up introducing peculiarly singular ideas of what may constitute place and community. So with this work, we set out to experiment with the potential for material interventions and participatory processes uh, to bring together the multiple actors and practices, social and institutional, for example, and open up spaces for plural account of place towards the remaking of the estate and its communities. So over the course of 12 months, uh, we worked closely with the regeneration engagement officer and seven residents of the housing estate. The process developed through a series of initial engagements, the design and use of a socio-technical system, and a curatorial activity to allocate and distribute stories in place. So initially, we experimented with a process uh, called City Walk, uh, which I presented last year here at CHI. The process basically entails groups going for walks and recording place-based narratives uh, using digital devices, maps, and prompt cards. Uh, we also generated some publicity material uh, to advertise um, uh, their walks and invite others to join in. 
However, over this time, it emerged the stressful and emotionally loaded period um, residents were going through, uh, packing their belongings and watching their home being demolished. So because of this, uh, the process of engaging others in walks around the estate proved very difficult. Um, also, issues with the promotional material came to the fore as the housing communication team initially um, didn't see them or, or saw them sort of deviating from their official branding and uh, regulations. But above all, the residents spoke to us about wanting to grow their community, wanting to find value in their past and enhance what they already had. So with these issues in mind, we designed a social technical system that we called digital traveling suitcases for prompting and recording stories. So given the group low literacy and digital skills, um, the cases were design, designed to make the storytelling process as accessible as possible. The cases aimed at supporting residents engaging others in the state, encouraging reciprocity through a process of asking and giving, as well as greater control over who should be invited to contribute the story and how. So residents, for example, could pick a story prompt or write their own from a box underneath there, then record their story and share it, uh, share it on the case uh, or online. So given issues with uh, wireless connection due to the regeneration, the cases then contain a GSM phone that connected to an interactive voice responsive system allowing the upload and access of content also online. Participants were then invited to attribute uh, a story to places on the estate using a message tile containing an envelope over there, then place it on top of the case and tie it to the previous card. Finally, they were invited to choose someone in the neighborhood using this cube, um, uh, pick a story prompt for them, and then pass the suitcase on to them. So in this way, the suitcase would travel person to person on the estate, mapping out uh, the relation in the neighborhood. Um, above all, the cases were really designed to convey uh, what people valued about the estate and show the diversity of these values. So four cases were introduced uh, in the state via four members of our, our working group of residents and traveled for about a month. Um, these were handed over to all the new residents, members of the regeneration team and housing officers, for example. Um, in total, uh, 35 stories were collected um, uh, through the cases and our initial engagements. These were then discussed in a curatorial activity and allocated to different sites across the estate. Um, the activity also included the design of a walk guide um, and experimenting with uh, graffiti around the estate, unique numbers uh, to access the interactive voice responsive system, listen and add audio content on location. So um, the insights uh, in the paper cover the data collected across all of these activities, including uh, audio stories, discussions, uh, workshops, and interviews, where we consider how the suitcases operated to support uh, the sharing of different understanding of life on the estate, and how that sharing offers some powerful insights that uh, we can learn from. Um, so I won't be able to show um, the complexities that emerged over this process, um, but for detail, um, feel free to have a look at the paper. Um, so yeah, um, the residents came uh, to see the cases as a sort of prop, uh, showing what they were doing in the community. But using them also reflected the slow process that building confidence and engaging others actually demands. Um, the intervention also came to surface some real struggles between the housing organizational and indeed political strategy and their genuine attempt to engage with the residents. The suitcases here offered opportunities to reflect on or reassess uh, institution and, relation, and residents' relations. And on screen here um, is an housing 
um, housing officer uh, reflecting um, on this upon receiving one of the cases. So the cases also nurtured the process of gifting, uh, the created uh, intimate moments between the giver and the taker. It also fo fostered the process of discovery and reflection, where issues were related to larger political contexts and assumptions about the state were unsettled. For example, in the quote up here, um, a participant expresses utter surprise to hear positive stories about past life in the state. So uh, throughout the process then, each residence developed its own uh, vision, if you like, for the digital trade. Some were keen to counter mainstream media negative portrayal of the estate by actively seeking alternative version of life on the estate. For others though, recounting difficult or sad episodes became something to be valued, to resist homogeneous and perhaps deceptive notions of perfect places and instead open spaces for improvement, as in this quote here, a participant um, suggests. Okay. So the cases then uh, overall generated lots of enthusiasm among both residents and the regression team, so much so that the manager showcased one of them at the housing institution general meeting. This dope, surprisingly perhaps, uh, provoked concerns among residents over the ownership of the suitcases and the content. Here then, a participant in fact says, well, it's a resident thing, and I think it's us who should decide which story go on there and whether it's good or bad. Okay, so heading towards the end of the presentation, I'm just going to uh, briefly highlight uh, a couple of points from our discussion. So the cases then with their material presence appear to support the expression of value and we think offered, way to, offered ways to cultivate relations. Also, they allowed residents to organize participatory spaces in different and emerging ways. What this showed us then is the potential for digital artifact to support meaning making in civic affairs and reconfigure spaces that can expressly redistribute participation. So authors have actually long advocated for an understanding of places um, as enacted through a multiplicity of practices. And what we show here is our attempt, uh, or is one way in which these uh, can be brought together through material means. So for us, uh, residents' concerns over the ownership of the cases actually spoke to us about the importance of safeguarding spaces for critical reflection, where different practices can be understood in relation to one another in order to work out what place and community might become rather than what it is. Our challenge here then is not to cement oppositional ground, but actually keep the different story going and enable ways in which these can be made sense of as tied to one another and productively worked with. To conclude then, uh, our insights uh, point towards an understanding of places as always becoming configurations of communal life. Here then, the technologies and interventions we might make can only be part of these ongoing processes. This study uh, showed us the extent to which existing configuration of space has significant implication for the way places are understood and then made. We think HCI can play a significant role in reconfiguring and redistributing participatory spaces through material means that can put institutional and social practices in dialogue with one another and renew in this way the processes that make and remake the places that matter to us. Thank you. Okay, yeah, don't, don't start talking, okay. Uh, I'm Tappan Parikh, UC Berkeley. So uh, 
Thanks for a great presentation. Um, I was curious about the uh, design choice to, to use a suitcase as opposed to like what might have been the other approach to just have a phone number and put up billboards. So I'm just wondering why the materiality, physical instantiation of the suitcase, and then also the role of the people who are entrusted with those suitcases in potentially mediating the interaction. Uh, yeah, uh, the first uh, bit of the question is uh, uh, basically when I started working, because of the regeneration, a lot of the residents that were there uh, didn't really uh, think their story had any value whatsoever. Obviously, there is um, there was an, a, a process of devaluing of not just uh, the material fabric of the regeneration, but actually everything that went with it. Uh, therefore, my life and my stories. Um, so the suitcases were, um, if you like, a, a symbolic way um, uh, to um, bring back or to convey, in fact, um, the, the idea that actually um, their story had values. Uh, the second half, I don't remember it. Just uh, the role of the people who you gave the suitcases to. So yeah. what role did they play in mediating yeah, the interaction? So the suitcases yeah. were designed uh, for them to use. So in a way, uh, uh, I worked closely with them for, for a while, and then we designed the suitcases, and then I handed over to them. So uh, they, they use them, they pass it on to someone else, and then to someone else, and uh, so, if that makes sense. I what wanted I to think? follow up, this is Joe Fishkay, Yahoo Research, Yahoo. Um, I wanted to follow up on Tappan's question. Um, and think about sort of metrics of success. I believe you said there were 36 stories gathered, is that right? Yeah. Um, and I wonder it, what that story, what that number represents, right? Um, in the context of Tappan's yeah. question, in that if you would say, I'm sure it took more than 36 hours to assemble all of those uh, suitcases, right? And if you say, well, we got 36 stories out of this, would it have been better to spend that time, rather than building the material artifact, going around and interviewing people, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think a material artifact, how I see it and I designed it for, it was a tool for them to engage uh, their neighborhood. And, um, and so the number of stories uh, in, in terms of the metric of success, uh, I consider myself a participant in this study, so I guess each one of the people who participated, um, the participants, the regeneration team, will tell you something different about what was successful about this project. The, in terms of quantification or number of stories, that's definitely quite low at mm. the bottom of the success. It didn't really matter, almost. Um, so, yes, I could have interviewed, but it's not my way of working. So it's a piece of action research, uh, this. Um, and, yeah, I guess, so, yeah, the suitcase was, mm -hmm. was a tool that was made uh, to support them in, uh, in, in, in engaging others. Hi, my name is Becky Michelson. I'm from the Engagement Lab at Emerson College. And uh, the director of our lab, Eric Gordon, talks about meaningful inefficiencies as opposed to a lot of civic technology, which uh, is very focused on efficiency. So this is a great example of that. Very beautiful work. Um, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about the stakeholders or the audience of, of the stories, because clearly it's meaningful for the participants to share the stories. Um, for themselves and among each other, but wondering if there are other audiences like urban planners or people that find value in listening to those stories also. Yes, yeah, so I did mention, maybe I was talking very fast, but yeah, I did mention how through the process they engaged the housing officer and the rege regeneration team. So when I was working there um, with them, um, literally the, the estate was a building site um, so, so that's when the intervention took place. Um, so, yeah, uh, they, also the housing officers and the regeneration team, as well as new uh, people coming in the new part of the estate, um, sort of were engaged with the suitcases, if that makes, yeah. So, so there was a quite, uh, quite a broad audience in the, where that sort of interacted, if you like, with the suitcases and therefore listen to the stories. 